time. So out. what did it feel like when you got filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues? I was a little scared. I kind of was an out of body moment. Yep. You know what I mean? Like it was not conscious. I remember um, they did an altar call mm -hmm. and I went up and the pastor needed help. And actually it was uh, Deacon Willoughby at the time who he put his hands on me and just started praying with me. And I just, I, I got filled and it yep. was wild. And, and it wasn't like they needed evidence of me speaking in tongues, but yeah. it was almost like when they heard it, it was yeah. kind of a, an acknowledgement as well. Yeah. And um, no, that was exciting. Yeah, that was exciting. And um, so that was a part of our that. journey before yeah. before us, us getting married. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that I could be that and have that as a foundation before I proposed. Yeah. That's beautiful. Important. See, yeah. I love when you get a chance to get to the nuances of couples because y'all probably never shared that day in y'all life to talk about. No, actually, no. No one's ever <laughs> no, asked. About no that. one's ever asked. Yeah, no. that's that's true. Yeah, that's, it was important. It was it was a deal breaker. I yeah. couldn't have married and not have the same faith. We couldn't, have, we couldn't have done it. Dear future wifey. Okay, scripturally, the Bible says your father has already designed and purposed you. I experienced an invitation of God this morning. So you got to become an elite decision maker. Elite decision maker. He said, because you are one fleshly decision away from losing it all. Etched in my mind is what true submission to Christ looks like. I got to maintain that secret connection I have with God. I'm so full and don't want to belabor this letter. And, and I understand how important it is for men to disciple men, because if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be where I am today. I've, I've traded uh, worldly pleasures to live a God-centered life. The encounter I just had, I just need to rest in it. Help us to be considerate, creative, and courageous lovers. I love you your future hubby. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latera Sar Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes and sign up for the mailing list. There's a link in the description to do so. And while you're at it, can you follow us on Patreon? Go ahead and sign up on Patreon so you can see behind the scenes footage of what we do in, in my life and me on speaking engagements and just my trial. Make sure that you go and join us on Patreon. Well, today, you know, I met this queen when I was, when we were visiting the vice president's residence a couple of days before her announcement to run for U.S. president. And so we got a chance to chop it up then. Um, I met her a couple of years prior uh, while she was celebrating her birthday with a couple of my friends. And um, I've always thought that she was fascinating because of what she had been able to build. Um, and I said, I want to talk to her. And I've also was very interested in talking to her husband to find out what it's like living with this woman. <laughs> oh yeah, because I know it can be <laughs> very part. challenging living with this woman. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast, my homie. <laughs> No, you like that. and John Dellinger, how y'all doing? Good, great. good. How you doing? Thank well, you for well, having us. I had to connect with my brother on this. Yeah, you know? yeah I appreciate that. I, I felt this pain. I felt, you know, when you're dealing with an upperly mobile woman, I know it's a lot of transitions that he had to take, especially yeah. when, you know, they always say with women that are business women, y'all have to move into this alpha space. Mm. And uh, sometimes y'all may bring that into the household. Yeah. So, oh, my. You know, I feel, I I feel I don't, I don't, seen and attacked right now. Yeah, you should feel seen and attacked at the same time. <laughs> but I, I want to see my brother, uh, John. So, John, uh, is that accurate? When when um, being married to a woman that is enterprising and built uh, a major brand like Curls, um, what was that like with her building this? Well, you know, uh, I always saw it in her. She was, even before she kind of created this entrepreneurial role for herself, she was always very determined um, but as she started to grow, we kind of, we, we were partners in the beginning. Like we did everything together. We grew this brand. I helped her as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was her baby, her brainchild, but I was very active. And as the brand started to grow and she started to wear multiple hats, um, yeah, there was a change. I mean, it was an adjustment. I'm not going to lie to you. It was an adjustment. Um, she kind of did step into an alpha role yep. and she needed to. And I'm sure she'll get into the reasons why she faced a, a ton of, of, of obstacles um, and only through her perseverance was she able to make 
the brand what it ended up being. Um, and to do that, like I said, she became an alpha and and that was a bit of an adjustment for me. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I appreciate the shout out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's real. Yeah. It's real. Uh, but no, I think uh, I, I'm super proud of her. I couldn't be more proud of her. <laughs> I'm glad uh, you celebrate her. Uh, but that's the part about, that's the nuances of relationship mm -hmm. and marriage. Uh, we always focus on the richer for poor, but even the struggles in getting rich and mm -hmm. wealthy, that thing can destroy a marriage in and of itself. Yes. And so that's what I want to give language to. So Mahisha, when you hear about him talking about uh, the struggles of now, Navigating you moved into this alpha position. Yeah. Do you take ownership and accountability? Say, yeah, I remember. I remember what I was doing back then. I do. I do. Um, yes, but it's part of the journey. Like you can't lead a brand and create an idea from ideation to creation to launch to, you know, scale a multi-million dollar brand and then sell without having something like that. That's system mm -hmm. in you. And so it was a necessity. I could yes. have been passive and did what I did. Right. Let's let's reverse engineer this. How did y'all meet? Well, there's two stories. There's her story and then the real story. So you can go ahead and start. With no, the there's story. the same story, but then there's a little disconnect in the middle about who. Shot they shot at who? Yes. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> let me just tell you the real story. Okay, I worked at Intel Corporation. Okay. That's why I started, and that's what gave me the inspiration to move out because I experienced racism there. But we wind it back. I'm on my way to the cafe. Hair in a bun, no makeup on, because I'm just working. There's no one at Intel, like literally no one at Intel. Older men, techie, techie, techie guys, okay. nerds, like no. So I never dressed up. I was always just very, you know, low key. So I'm on my way shooting to the cafe to go get my lunch and bring it back to my office. And I see him walking down the cafe, like to the same cafe. And he had a lot of swag. And I was like, he's not, mm -mm, where, where did he come from? And I'm like, oh my God, who is that? And so I get to the cafe and this is still the same story as yours. I get to the cafe and I'm in the salad bar line, you know, two sides mm -hmm. and he's on one side, I'm on the other. And he got position himself right on the opposite side uh -huh. as I move from lettuce to tomatoes he moved from lettuce to tomatoes <laughs> and he kept he would facts. lock and he step said he lock said and step yeah. every step and he kept making eye contact along the way yeah. so then I go to pay for my food and lo and behold he comes behind me he's right behind me and then I go to get my drink and he's behind me again I had to stop and say <laughs> goodbye because he's right behind me okay you know the fountain drink all right so then at that moment I say we say hello and he asked, this is the shady part. He asked, what's your name? Mahisha Dillinger. I mean, Mahisha Vernon, I mean, name. What's your name? John Dillinger. And he asked me right after that, what do you do? And I said, I'm so a marketing program here? manager. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm a marketing program manager. He said that if I said I was the admin or secretary, it would have not. A joke. No. You know, just own it. I own my part. Well, I didn't say it then, obviously. Was I know, but you, you, you yeah, understood yeah. No, that. I, I said that if... <laughs> She she asked me. She said after we got to know each other, so why did you ask me that question? Like, Second that was question. Weird. Right after, what's your name? I was like, well, you know, if you were like an admin, because we're at Intel, and I didn't, I didn't think I'd see someone like her at Intel. I said, if you were an admin or you what, know, say what like you really that, said, I probably would have just been at, like hit and quit. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> I and mean, I was just being real. Is that horrible? It's the truth. It's I love when people be honest. So I was wondering, like, first from name to what do you do? Okay, so then from there. Um, John, 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 you said if she was an admin, you just hit it well, and quit he, it. So but there's a little context that I So like I was working for IBM as an IT consultant at the time, and I was living in D.C., Right, so I was commuting to oh, Sacramento. Oh, you didn't live here. No, uh -uh. I was commuting to Sacramento every week and then going home for the weekends. And I was just, and I knew that the, the project was only about six or nine months. And then, you know, I'd move on to the next project. So in my mind, I was like, if she's just, you know, then I'm not, like just I'm going, you know. it's just, it's just, like, it's going to be a little flame. A little flame. flame. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So, so what um, city were y'all living in? This was Sacramento, California. Yeah, okay, was in I'm Sacramento. from California. Okay. And he was from DC and he came in. The IBM oh, was contracted yeah, yeah. to bring, they were contracted to work on Intel's We were doing laptops. like their Y2K yeah. migration. So Y2K, y'all yeah. yeah. remember that? Yes. Oh, how Crazy, old right? I am, yeah. We was doing a Y2K <laughs> migration and I was flying in every week. So that yeah. was the reason. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, I think that accurate, that story is pretty accurate, but like, yeah, it was intentional. I was like, I saw her, I was like, I want to, cause I've never been the dude, like when I was in college out there, single wilding out, I never was a guy that had the lines. Yeah. So I was just trying to put myself in a position to create eye contact yeah. and create an opportunity where 
there would have to be some type of engagement. And so it worked out. It worked out really well. <laughs> like, she, worked um, out really well. What? She definitely say? was the pursuer, though. How? Pursuer. No. Okay. Okay. Here, here's the deal. No. I, 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 back in those days, I was really good at like playing hard to get, like showing interest, but not putting on the full court press. Yeah. Because, you know, the thing I learned early on is like when you're dealing with really pretty women. Come on. Every guy's giving them that. Yeah. So you got to like differentiate yourself. So uh-huh. then all of a sudden it's like college is like the pretty girls like, well, I'm used to all these dudes showing me all this yeah. attention doing too much. Yeah. Why is this guy like, he's cool and he seems interested, but he's not really following up like that. And then that, that, well, John, I think, John, worked okay, perfectly. Pause, like, pause, 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 it did. Though. Okay, so I'll give him the piece that's right. Now we, from that moment, I said, "What building are you in?" He said, "I'm in the sixth building. I'm in the fourth building. I mean, we're both in the fourth building, and what floor are you on?" So he came to see me on my floor. Um, he wrote a note on my on my office door, and when I came back to work, he wrote that a note Monday, on your door. I mean, on my whiteboard. Yeah, yeah. Whiteboard. John from IBM came by to say hello. He All said, right, John, that's and so well I'm like, played. Hi, well right? I yeah. like that. So from that point on, we went out. We had lunch. Almost every day, right? Yeah. Together. A lot, yeah. And then yeah. we went out that Wednesday. Oh, that same night, actually. We went, we went out. out. Yeah, that we went out that night. And I had to. I had a daughter from a previous relationship. And he said, we should go to dinner sometime. I said, how about tonight? I said that <laughs> only because I didn't have my daughter that night. It was going to be a whole other week before she was going to be gone. Yeah. So it was an opportunity. So that's why he felt like I was Well, when you were telling your friends and all that stuff. You remember? Okay. You remember that? So anyway, moving on. Yeah. It was good. It was good. It was fun he, time. You tell your friends. So, 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 so what did you think when you met him then? Why were you telling your friends about him? Good question. Gosh. <laughs> Actually, this is funny you say that. I And I no joke and no lie. I told my girlfriend I was on the phone with when I met him. I promise you, on all four of my kids, I said I met my husband. I said that. She did. And she'll and she'll tell you. Mm. Yeah. Why? What made you think that was your husband? I don't I it, well, I don't know. I just felt I felt it. I felt this is my husband. I said it to her and she's like, "Girl, be quiet." I'm like, "No, I met my husband." And all you had was a hello at that point. We had that connect and then that was it and I said that. And I, so yeah, he you were you were feeling me. No, I was. But, you know, see the thing, you know, listen, I was, but I could not let her see that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. was all part of the the plan. So Well, you did let me see because you courted me like nobody's business. You spent so much on me. I, I well, yeah, but this is much later. I'm talking about in the early in the early stage before you, you get the hook. But you. I loved we had, had lunch to get the hook. a lot. Um, no, but every yeah. day. Yeah, every we day. had we had lunch often, got to know each other, and it was it was um it, it was fun. It was because, you know, I would go home on the weekends and so there was that yeah. that whole thing thing but you know you got to keep in mind too like during this time Mahisha's single and every dude in Sacramento that's worth anything is trying to get at her really or like yeah it was so, after you like that Mahisha well I actually yeah, yeah it was <laughs> like I actually that. just it was like exited that. a high profile relationship oh, with really? someone in sports and NBA and I was like I don't want that ever again and when I met him I'm like I want a man I mean he was very very smart, which I always loved, uh, you know, so you're, so, so you're attracted sapiosexual. to that. You're sapiosexual. Yeah. Sapiosexual is where you're attracted to intellect. Oh, and I was like, oh my God. And then he also was super, what I was attracted to, super fiscally responsible. Like the, he was doing well in his career, but had a regular car. He wasn't yeah. blinked out. It was like responsible. So you can grow and not have to be, you know, someone exactly. that's going to go, you know, make you guys go broke. Yeah. Those things were, I was thinking about that, you know, and then the longevity. How, how were you during this time? We were... Me, uh, oh, for, you were oh, 28, 28. Was I 28? I oh think, my gosh. And I was like 26. Oh, wait, so we're kind of apart. Six. Yeah. And 20, you were thinking like that. 27. I was 27. Fi- and you 27. wanted, you was looking at lifetime financial. Yeah. Yeah. Fiscal responsibility. You were thinking yes, like that. Yes. Yeah. It's like, okay, so his choices, Max on 401k, like he, his choices were wise and I like that. And he was always also smart. But beyond, before I knew that, I was attracted to him first and foremost. Right. And um, yeah. And that's in essence magazine wrote an article about us. Um, it was when Mr. Wright is white. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this was in that was the was article. In, uh, yeah, it when was Mr. A, Wright is white. Yeah, how old was, were, y- were y'all married at that time? Were we married? We yet? were dating. We were dating. Recently. I think. And yeah. they wrote an article about you. <laughs> yeah, it was some other couples too, but it was like I don't know how it got on the radar, but that was funny. But you're not white. What is your race? So um, half Korean. Yes. And then my dad is like European. White. And there's some American okay. Indian. White. So yeah, white. We did the ancestry and there's like mostly German, a little bit of Cherokee. Okay. And then Because I see Korean. Korean. I, I, and yeah. I didn't know what the other was. Yeah. Right. I thought you could be Korean and black too. He gets that a lot. Yeah. That's what I thought. 
the people get that a lot and they'll say oh I love black love on our posts I'm like <laughs> it's funny. oh you yeah, love we black but that. I'm not gonna say anything well, or yeah in the summer when I get a little more olive it's like Puerto Rican or something <laughs> yeah. I get that sometimes now was that a thing were you like only dating black men at the time or what was that yeah predominantly black I mean I dated um, I grew up in the hood so it was a lot of either blacks or Mexicans yeah. right so I dated Mexican before or no white people in my neighborhood where I grew up and then the high school I, I went to a mixed school I was bust in so so then I had mm-hmm. white friends, black friends or whatever. So I dated a white guy in high school. So my, my family is multicultural. So it's never been a problem. What about you, John? Um, he only. I dated, uh, you know, I, I've never dated a white woman. Um, or I dated, I dated um, Latinos and, and black women. So Puerto Rican, when he says Latino, Puerto Rican. <laughs> Mostly Puerto Dominican. Rican. So, you know, and in black. DC, you know, there's a, there's yeah. a big Puerto Rican po- or Latino population. There's a lot of South Americans and, and um, black. I just always, I grew up in a military family. Okay. So I grew up overseas mostly. Um, and it's interesting, my upbringing, um, you, because I grew up mostly overseas, you look at like other Americans as your family. You don't see race. It's yes. different. So I heard it that. was really wild because, you know, you're in a country where everyone else is foreign to you, but your people on your base. So I saw, I never saw race, but yep. it was interesting when I came, uh, my dad got a, got stationed back in the States for my junior and senior year of high school. That's the very first time I ever experienced race where like you would go to the lunchroom and there'd be tables like with just black kids and then the tables with white kids. And it was, it was new for me. So for me growing up, like I was always, um, I don't know, I always was hanging around people of multiple uh, cultures and uh, hip hop was the thing that really kind of define my youth like i just fell in love with hip-hop at a young age and just the culture the the shoes the clothes the music obviously and i don't know i've always dated outside of my race you should see our pictures early pictures with him and his tims his big avx avx leather and baggy pants and he looked like john b with his gold tee you gotta get the old picture you gotta see yeah you gotta see now back back then people thought he was black yeah, that yeah. was it. John Especially. B. The John you know the John B. Cut. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was it back then. Yeah, that's, that's the swag that attracted you right there, Mahisha. Yeah, I, li- I did. Yeah, I It was it. different, right? Because, I, I mean, she was used to these Cali dudes with the Chucks uh, and the Dickies. No, and, no, yeah. no, no. No? No, darling. No, I did it. Uh, you know, no, I know you did. You, yeah. you did some high profile. You what you saying? You taking people all across the United States? I mean, States? <laughs> she said no not just Cali don't relegate me just in California she said no well I mean you know different yeah. levels you know not not Chucks well there's levels you're right there's levels to it I mean that's it. a whole nother there's a different vibe though you she know, said that's, a whole nother, that's, that's a whole nother income bracket that's yes what she's, that's <laughs> what I'm getting at thank you facts that's true this and so true. and so at the very beginning so after you knew her profession, then what you look at her at? Since it wasn't just a hit it and quit it, did you start looking at something more long-term? Did you say, oh, here's somebody I could be a girlfriend, but I'm definitely at 26, not thinking about a wife right now. Or yeah, were you married well, minded? Yeah, you know, once once those initial lunches happened, we started to get to know each other, and I started to get to know who she was as a person. They moved pretty quickly, like as far as in my mind, like, okay, this is something that could potentially be serious, right? Really? Because at that point, I was still commuting back and but forth. But what was serious to you? Like I had, I was never the type to have lots of relationships. I only had one relationship prior to her. I messed wow. around, yeah, wilding out. But I only had one relationship prior, wilding out. And so, <laughs> um, you know, for me, I wanted somebody that was career focused, yeah, super intelligent, like smart, driven, and responsible. Um, I was at the stage in my life where I was kind of getting tired of the messing around. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, at 26, I, you were tired of it. Yeah, well, because you know what happened was right after college, I accepted this position with IBM, and it was a hundred percent travel job. Oh, so yeah. I was a consultant. So like I, every, it'd be some some projects I would be in multiple cities a week. Some projects I'd be you know in New York for a couple of weeks or Chicago, and so I got used to like just mm-hmm. having. Um, <laughs> You know, meaningless relationships, right? <laughs> I don't think you call those relationships. Right, right, right. right. Not relationships. Right, right, right. Nothing They're significant. And I just, I, and when you're on the road like that, I yep. think I was looking for something more stable. Yeah. I never imagined, you never go looking for it. I never imagined I would meet someone like her at Intel. It's the last yeah. thing I expected. Um, but yeah, I got, as I got to know her, I loved her personality. She was obviously great upbringing, grew up in church, um, very selfless, but very driven. Like I said earlier, like you could see that she had everything that you need to be an entrepreneur. Because not everyone, there's a lot of talented people out there. Not yeah. everyone can 
be an entrepreneur. Yeah. It takes a special something. And she had that. And then also, as I got to know her a little bit better, like I really, um, as I got to know the fact that she, you know, was a mother at that young age, I was super impressed by the fact that mm. she put her daughter first Good. in everything. Like I didn't need her until what six nine we months. We knew we were in. I respected Mary. that. Yep. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I respected that. Um, and so yeah, that, no, I I knew pretty early on. I mean, because it was fast and furious. I felt yeah. like because I was traveling so much, it's like we got to get it in. Let's get it. Like, so it was like lunches most days. We try to get out whenever she could get out in the evenings. Um, yeah. So where when they click with you? They, it, like she said, you had her at hello. When did it click with you for you to say, because you say it's serious, but when did you say, I want to spend the rest of my life with this woman? Uh, what was that, about nine months? Yeah. So, so the project, that's a great question. The project was coming to an end, right? Because that's how these things work. We come in and do a job. We finished the Y2K migration. And now it's decision time. Like, I live in D.C. Mm -hmm. So I decided... I'm just going to take a chance. Didn't know nobody in Sacramento. I didn't really particularly love California yeah, um, or Sacramento, but I made the decision. I, I went home. I packed up everything that I owned that I valued into my SUV at a, a Suzu Rodeo. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I drove remember. cross country by myself. So who's pressed? By myself. <laughs> To, um, he moved to from try DC, to, Chocolate City, that's a long drive, to yeah, California, man, that drive Caltown, was... Sacramento, to be with yeah, me. So who's yeah. pressed? I think I win the argument. <laughs> oh, well, I think I win the argument. You know, he said he had nine months invested in your at months. the time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you months. could have come back to DC, and I love DC. Wait, I don't... So, so you would have moved? Me? Yeah. Um, no children. Yeah. I mean. I'm talking with your child. If he said, Without, hey, with the child, with, oh, with your I child, have done if he that. said, hey, I would like for you to, you know, I could I, not have done that to her. Why you said to her? My daughter. I know what, 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 what? Well, her father. Oh, her father was still involved. Her father is very much involved in Sacramento. Okay. Yes, and I did not want to, uh, you know, just like totally in, like mess up her yeah. life, her stability. Yeah, so you thought about that instead, and, and, and you said it'd be best for you to move there. You didn't yeah, get her no, buy Yeah, so that was it. No, because I respected that, right? Because but you didn't that, you ask know. her, like, you just, you, so at that point, you were saying y'all are dated at this point where y'all are exclusive. Mm -hmm. So you're exclusive. Did you ask her would she want you to live there or did you just assume that you, you No, want she wanted me there. <laughs> I think she it was wanted, I mean she, it was she pretty evident. Yeah, we she knew where we there. were going. She, it was always difficult um to like leave on the weekends. Yeah. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um and I yeah. knew and we had already discussed it, you know, uh a few times and I knew that it was there was no opportunity for her to come to DC. And, and I respected that. Like and you I packed I, up your stuff, moved I there did, because man. you felt like so nine months, is that when you started saying, This is my wife I'm dealing with? I, it was to that to that in nine months I said, This is I, I didn't know at that moment that she was going to be my wife, but I said that this relationship is <laughs> Wait, worth me putting everything I know. Wait, I mean, I'm just being honest. I, I proposed to you like after two two years and three months of dating, um, but I knew that I wanted to pursue this Something. relationship more seriously. Like I thought it was a a, a big step but he's in my commitment. Everything. She's going like, okay, listen, Wait, nine I'm, months. I'm, I'm going, yeah, I'm going back in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, no, we had just. I mean, we oh, had. Well, we had already. Your we feelings, had already shared. Like that was when you. We had already shared like I, I love you and yeah. all that. Um, and I was like, yeah, like who knows what's going to happen, but like I, if this is good, you know, I want so to try to make months, it work. Wait, yeah. You weren't sure we're going to be married at nine months. Sure. No, but I wanted <laughs> that. I wanted okay. it. I wanted that. Obviously, I moved well, out because I, I guess wanted. I that. was on my own on that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I knew it was going to happen eventually. Like I wanted to do it, but you okay. know, you have to. I never really felt, I felt like I got to know her Why enough. you go long distance. Right, right. So I wanted to like be there all the time. Um, and we didn't live together either. Um, That's good. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, I knew like I, this is what I wanted. I wanted a long-term stable relationship. I didn't want to be out there anymore. Um, and she's a person I wanted to try to make that work with. And so, so I moved. you said you proposed two and a half years in? Mm, it was before it was about two. It's a little two? bit after two years. Two yeah, years and a couple it was, months. It was expiration on that. He knew. Yeah, so so what were you waiting on? You were, you were saying if it got to what point would you have I, ended? It, it? it couldn't have been past two and a half because okay. you wasted my time at this point. So two and a half years, you felt like uh, you were twenty seven at the time. So by thirty, you were like, if we're not married by thirty, um, yeah. Engaged. I mean, yeah. I need to know. I mean, otherwise, I mean, you you date with intent, right? And if you know all the things had to be checked, all the things had to be understood, and one of the biggest things we had to. 
um, work through, which he was a trooper. We were raised differently in church. Like he went to church, but it was on the base and like every religion had a 30 minute segment or whatever, right? Oh, okay. Is that right? Yeah, it was like one church and like every denomination had like an hour. So an it was hour. like, you know, we had, a, you know, it's a base church. Like yeah. on, so it was like Catholic at nine and then yeah. it's like, meth, you know, so it was different. My, yeah. my church upbringing, she was Wednesday like night, Bible yeah. study, yeah. Friday, yeah. choir rehearsal, right. sa- and s- worship on Sunday and Sunday nights. Yeah. And very active in the community. And also very different worship. Pentecostal, mm-hmm. speaking in tongues, uh, unicorns. See, I grew, I grew up Pentecostal. I grew up in the all white church. Mm. Really? I grew up Assemblies of God. Pentecostal? Oh. Yeah, Assembly- Pentecostal. Uh, well, they're, why? The white of Pentecostal speaking in tongues, all that. Well, they have the long hair and no and long dress dresses. No, they didn't dress like that. They dressed normal, and okay. I had, but it was it was straight up. You know, the big pastor during that time in in, in our in our faith was Jimmy Swagger. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I grew up in that. You okay. know what I'm saying? Where. Laying hands, speaking yes. in tongues. Somebody will stand up in the middle of the church, speaking in tongues. Yeah. Somebody will stand up on the other mm-hmm. side and interpret, interpret what the it. person mm-hmm. is saying. So I grew up in all of that, being yes. the only black family in an all white church. Interesting, you know. And so that's where I come from. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. same experience, but all black. Yeah, <laughs> for me. <laughs> and I mean, I saw a devil being cast out yep. in yep. front of me. I mean, I was loving. So anyway, John yeah. had to come into that because I'm like, okay, one thing is important: our kids have to be raised in church the same way, and we have to have the you know the same philosophy. Mm-hmm. And what I admired and loved is that, you know, he wanted to hear more and get his own education. So, oh, Minister um, Richard Willoughby, it was about nine months. He would come in, John would go an hour before church or two before, just with him one-on-one with Minister Richard Willoughby, who's now as a pastor. And he got his one-on-one, what he needed to understand, to learn more about the faith, the religion, why, and, you know. Taking my own, like, personal Bible study with him. You did that on, you asked, you, you sought that out. I did because I, I, you know, it was important. And like I said, I was raised in church, so I believed in God. I just didn't know him like she knew him, and I wanted to learn more. Um, so yeah, we went, so you're we went extremely that. intentional. You're an intentional man. If you want something, you're going to go after study it and get the understanding of why you're doing what you're doing. Absolutely, and like, it was important for yes. us. It was important, and I didn't want to just check the box and like just start attending church. I was like, no, I need to like really That's understand. Good. And he dedicated. I still love Bishop Willoughby about that because yeah. he, he spent that time That's with John. Good. Just nine months, one on one, and then John wound up getting filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. So this is y'all, why y'all dating all of this experience? Yeah, so that's what I was saying. Like, yeah, it was a lot, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> that's why when I said nine months, like I didn't know. It's like, I knew in my heart I wanted to be with this woman, but I knew there were a lot of things we needed to check off. That's like good. This, the church and because her mom, when I met her uh, initially, her mom let me know too. Like, yeah, we we raised in church, and that, <laughs> this is how you know this is how it needs to be. And uh, she was always great about it, but like I just knew my upbringing was different. And mm-hmm. it wasn't that we didn't believe; it's just it was just right. a different experience. Difference. Like I was baptized in a lake when I was like eleven. Wow. You know what I mean? Uh, at a at an army base. In Germany, but um, it wasn't the same. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, John is a jokester. Oh my God. I was just thinking about <laughs> at church. You know how when people, people fall started out. running. Yeah. I didn't There's that a, was I, for some reason this came to my mind. There was always this one man who on cue would hit the, soon as that start running. And John, was, you can't sit in church with John. Because John, as soon as he get up, John Globe. Here we go. <laughs> and I'm cracking up, trying to hold it like, in. Yeah, I'm like, oh. He's so cute. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, four flat. He did this in the four flat today. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. No. But, but you saw a lot, right? Yeah, I was saw that, a lot. No, yeah. it was a it was a lot. I had never seen nothing like that. It was and so I wanted to I wanted to know. I wanted to experience it. You know, not just watch it, but experience it. Yeah. So that was a that was a great time. So what did it feel like when you got filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues? I was a little scared. I kind of was an out of body moment. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it was not conscious. I remember um, they did an altar call, mm-hmm. and I went up, and the pastor needed help. And actually, it was uh, Deacon Willoughby at the time who he put his hands on me and just started praying with me. And I just I, I got filled, and it yep. was wild. And and it wasn't like they needed evidence of me speaking in tongues, but yeah. it was almost like when they heard it, it was yeah. kind of a an acknowledgement as well. Yeah. And um, no, that was exciting. Yeah, that was exciting. And um, so that was a part of our journey that. before yeah. before us, us getting married. Yeah. I wanted to make sure that I could be that and have that as a foundation before I proposed. Yeah. That's beautiful. Important. See, yeah. I love when you get a chance to get to the nuances of couples because y'all probably never shared that day in y'all life to talk about. No, actually, no. No one's ever <laughs> no, asked. About no that. one's ever asked. Yeah, no. that's that's true. Yeah, that's, it was important. It was it was a deal breaker. I yeah. couldn't have married and not have the same. 
faith. We couldn't have, we couldn't have done it. Mm-hmm. So how did you propose? What was that conversation like? Who did you talk to? Did you talk to her parents to get their blessing? Uh, how, how I talked to your mom you and did? Harvey. Oh, I yeah, know. I talked to uh, her mom and her stepfather, Harvey. He was very close to us at the time and um, got their blessing. And as far as like the whole event, like we were in Mexico, mm-hmm. we went to Mexico. I don't think, did you have an idea of all these years? I don't know if you did. I thought, well, I, I do have good. something. That I don't think you know this. Oh, see, what? we, we were revealing ahead. things. Yeah, it's something to... he doesn't even know. What happened? Okay, so <laughs> we were in Mexico, Cabo. The reason why he proposed in Cabo is because that's where I love to go. When I lived in California, I used to love Cabo. And we went there on a trip together, mm-hmm. and then he proposed there. But <laughs> I don't think he knows this. I told, uh, I never told you this. Okay, I knew you were going to oh. because you asked me to get your backpack, and I saw the box. Oh, the ring box. See, I didn't even know. And she I never played told it off so the well. The exclusive right here, the yellow couch, <laughs> yeah. be revealing stuff. That's why people, when they sit on this yellow couch, it be revealing stuff. Okay? I remember, yellow he couch. doesn't know to this day. That's I just wild. Told him you, you, uh, I would have never known because she, she's, she's we were on a the plane role. and I and I saw, I was like, oh my God, so I knew it was coming that weekend. <laughs> what would happen oh. if he didn't do it that day? That weekend? I mean, because I was already. <laughs> yeah, she was. She was like, let's You'd be go. like, listen, I saw the ring in your bag. Now I don't know what we did this trip where you didn't propose to me, but you need to propose to me before we get on this plane. That's right. Now, so we, yeah, I proposed. He obviously accepted, and uh, yeah, the rest is history, man. Twenty two years later, twenty two years yeah. later, yeah. twenty two years married or married. a whole dating, married, married. married. Yeah, mm-hmm. when's your anniversary? Uh, February eighth. That's February right. the eighth. That's right. February the eighth. When you look back over marriage, what did you learn most about yourself, John, and then you, Mahisha, about marriage? What did marriage teach you about yourself? <sighs> I'm I'm an introvert. By nature. And what I've learned is that it's okay to speak up for yourself sometimes. Good. You know, you know, you touched on it earlier, but when she started to develop that alpha Mm -hmm. role, it shifted a lot of things in our household. And I think for too long, I was quiet. I wasn't always okay with how things were going. Um, And it wasn't necessarily anything that she was doing wrong. Certainly, there was no ill intent. But I just did not um, speak up as much as I should have during that time. And I think that that caused issues. And so I've obviously over the years, I've gotten much better about speaking up. Um, And I've also learned how to be more selfless. Mm. This woman, despite everything that she has and everything that she's accomplished, um, is always looking to give back. Good. And I I don't think I, I... not that I'm a, I don't think I'm, I would never describe myself as selfish, but there's levels of selflessness. Yeah. And um, I think I've become much more selfless after being with her for so long. That's good. Yeah. Wow. That's a good, yeah. that's a good takeaway. Yeah. Mahisha, what you learned about yourself? Well, that I had to be a little bit more demure. <laughs> the word of the Cutesy. year. Um, Mindful. Yeah. Because I am. I don't think I grew into being an alpha. I had to be. My background was just where you you had to survive. So you weren't, there mm-hmm. was no space to be passive. Mm-hmm. You had to go for what you wanted. Yeah. And it was survival of the fittest. So it wasn't something that was born because of entrepreneurship. It was born because of my environment and mm-hmm. where I was. I agree. So, I mean, because, you know, at first grade, get myself up and out and dressed and to school and locked up and come home and do the dishes, do my homework, then go play. I was responsible for myself yeah. and to make my choices. And so I always was in charge of things of myself, my surroundings. So, you know, I had to learn through marriage and with John to kind of pipe some of that down. I don't always do the best job. I understand, but it's still, <laughs> it works. I'm, I'm aware. We're very, but you know, I think it's a good balance. Opposite personalities. Yes. In and some we have ways. to remind you, I have to remind him to speak up more because Baby, if I if we're in a fight or if I'm upset about something, you are gonna know. There's no way he won't know. I can't fake it. I can't smile. You're gonna know. Right. But he will. He gets covered up. But for me, I can't. So you'll hold stuff like yeah. because you don't speak up, it'd be like two years later, and you'd be like, you'll it, snap. Yeah, you'll snap, and you'd mm-hmm. be like, well, you you never do this with me. I always that you just don't. He's like, you haven't said that in two years about that. I thought you were okay yeah. with that. You're like, no, I, I was hoping that you'd be sensitive enough to my. That's <laughs> it, man. Yeah. You know it. That's that's it. that's exactly it. So for me, yeah. I can't keep it in. Because I, I was right. married I, when I was married. My my ex wife was like that. Like she's she's very. We did this pro, uh, personality profile test. 
process and she is I forgot what it's called but she just holds everything in mm. you know what mm. I'm saying and it was a contemplator so she was 99% contemplator and so she'll just you know, ideate over it forever and just never, ever tell you what's, what's going on. And then a year and a half later, you'd be like, what? And she could tell you every detail about what happened in the moment she felt that I was like, you've been holding on to that for seven months. You could have just told me that, yeah. you know, but, yeah. you know, there's this thing, too, where a lot of times people don't. It's because that type of woman or even person may be so empathetic that they don't want to ruffle any feathers, but they're internally hurting themselves. And so that's what John ended up doing is he's internally hurting himself by just speaking up and giving you the space to try to correct it or show that they're not that you don't prioritize his feelings anyway. And then say, that's all in your head. You know what mm, I'm saying? At least you yes. get the truth about right. it instead of just coming with the conclusion internally. Yeah. Um, and so when you as y'all were navigating that space, I. Um, how bad? No, let's go back. So, when did you start curls? When did you create curls? In two thousand two. Yes, uh, launched. Y'all haven't been married at how long at that point? Um, like two uh, years. Two years. Okay. So it's early on. Early, there. Very early. Early on, and all that whole year, that whole like five year era was a is a blur. We had two kids. Oh, we launched wow. back to back. The second one was a surprise baby uh, blessing, <laughs> but um, had curls. Was working curls plus Pfizer and two babies additional plus Kiana. My life was a whirl whirlwind. Yeah, and, it was nuts. And so you know, I, I had to re- defer to you to see how long we're married. So it was two years, and you know, grew it from before e- social media was there, before mm-hmm. you could hire a blogger influencer to promote you. It was grassroots grinding, right? And going where the consumer was, and then going from e-commerce only to launch into retail, and that mm. really blew the brand up, right? And then scale, 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 and sell. Yeah, so that was kind of the problem. But it was a lot. It was a lot of work. And, um, you know, he was along for the ride. So what yeah. y'all think? Is it because, John, you said you were helping her out in the early stages of it as y'all was building or whatnot. What did you think? Because early in the conversation, you said upon meeting her, you know, I don't know if that's hindsight been twenty twenty, but you saw the entrepreneurship skill set in her. Um, so when she comes with you, comes to you and say, this is the idea that she had, how did you support it? What did you think in that moment? I thought it was great. Well, actually, I I, I encouraged it. Mm-hmm. So we were staying in like a, a rental at the time. And what city I, were y'all in at this time? This is in Sacramento. Oh, y'all still in and, Sacramento? Um, duplex. Yeah, we were in the duplex. And I remember in her room, we had separate rooms. We weren't married. So we had separate rooms. Um, because her daughter was there and we was like, we didn't want to put that example out. Yeah. So I remember going into her room and her like sink counter had about 50 different products. Like it was nuts. And I'm a very tidy person. I got a neatness and tidiness, right? Military. Yeah. So, yeah. so I was like, wow, like, why is there so many? Pro- you got like 50 different shampoos. You got like some kind of oils in here. <laughs> da, 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 da. Like it's wild, right? I'm like, I thought you just had a shampoo and a conditioner. And she was like, well, she's trying to explain to me. She's like, there's not really products out there that are for my hair type. So I have to like use this shampoo and and, and to, for my hair, I need to like mix this avocado oil in here to get it to do what I want. And I was just like, well, there's a, aren't there a lot of women and children like you? And she's <laughs> like, yeah. I was like, well, why don't you just make a brand? <laughs> just kind of jokingly, yeah. really. Right. Um, but then like her, she's very much, once she gets down a rabbit hole, she's like, is there. Right. So she yeah. started doing the research and, you know, before you know it, within a few months, she had hired a cosmetic chemist. Yeah. Oh. And like fat, and you know, so like it was, it started to become real. And then we went on like a, a weekend trip to uh, Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara yeah. And we actually together were at dinner, came up with the name of the mm-hmm. company. And, yep. and Steven started talking about some product names. Yep. And uh, and then she had five products, like four products. Four. Launched, launched with yep. four products. So yeah, yeah, it was pretty amazing. Yeah, that was over dinner, Santa Barbara yeah. on vacation. Birthday. Yeah. birthday and in the early days, well, it was like, it was just her and I. Like, you know, I would be filling, you Avocado know, oiling oil. bottles, filling yeah. stuff, taking it to the UPS or USPS. And um, yeah, and then to see where she took that and- Grew it was was amazing. I want to ask you this. So in that stage, what did y'all see? Did you just see it as this is a cool little side hobby to help a couple of folks? Did you really see it as something that would be on shelves across the world? That's what I hoped for. And I actually was escaping racism in corporate America. Um, I saw the writings on a wall. I was a star player at Intel. My plan wasn't to be an entrepreneur at first. I thought I was going to rise a corporate ladder. I was mm-hmm. going to do all these amazing things. And I was doing everything they said on paper I should do. But I kept getting met with resistance. And I got this one 
one manager, and I'm going to name his name because I believe in naming devils and call him out, Lyle McCarthy. Lyle McCarthy at <laughs> Intel Corporation. He... I am sorry for this man. I am sorry for this man. Well, no, I mean, I've been in touch a few times. Okay, you've been Since my success, and I'll share what I said. Uh, Okay. So this man, this gentleman actually put me on a corrective action plan despite everything I did, right? I knew I was doing well. Corrective action plan is Intel's way of getting rid of you, but document Mm it. Yep. So- I was a young single mother, no resources to back me up. I needed the job and I was so beyond stressed. And I remember praying to God, I said, God, you have to move this man because every time I would have someone call in because I was interviewing out, he would bash my name. I couldn't even leave. And I had so many opportunities to leave and I just couldn't. And God moved him. When I tell you, he came back about a month later and said, I'm going to Intel Malaysia. I got promoted. So someone else came into his position and then I was doing well with that person. And of course I had my review and my review was stellar versus the last mm-hmm. time it was, you're slower than you need to be on this plan. I was faster than I got a stock option, increase, raise all the things. I knew it. It was really, uh, I knew it. Right. So he so comes, you were making good money back then. To, to, well, then. I mean, relatively speaking, I don't well, I'm think talking I was about it, in, in any type of computer software technology. You're on the upper end of the, the level in, in finance. But right? as but, you know, we yeah. don't always get equal pay. That part. So I don't know if I negotiate enough that I should have that or part. had enough of that, of the income I could have had if I had been, had been white. Honestly, yeah. just keep yeah. it real. Oh, yeah. I don't want to use yeah. a card, but it's real. It's real. And a woman as well. Yep. So mm. let me tell you the back end. Lyle McCarthy comes back six months later. I'm still there now. And I see him in the lunchroom. Mm. And so he's, he sees me. He's uncomfortable. And he, see, he moves away so he can be behind a pillar so we can have view of each other. You and I, sent him a man ni- I mean, he was, no, I, but he was uncomfortable. He knew yeah. he was wrong. So I sent him a nice message that, I, you know, thank God, look at my raise and my review. And I knew that that was personal, but bad apples is this. And I'm thankful that someone else didn't act the way you did. And, and then later, maybe months later, no, years later, I found mm-hmm. him on Facebook. After Curls was great. You know, hit the man up again. I, I sent a two word message. Google me. <laughs> and then did. he blocked me. <laughs> And that was it. <laughs> but I mean, I had—I mean, you know, I'm one of those people. I, you know, well, he, he told the man to Google you. Yeah, I he did. Blo- he blocked you, and he blocked he, me. He, he's already know who you are. Because <laughs> no, and you know, it's so interesting. So that's what I had to say that story because that's what led me into entrepreneurship. Because I was nervous, and I'm like, I what if this happens again? Right. <laughs> You can't, she didn't never want to have like someone controlling my financial right. legacy and destiny. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's what it felt like. He had that control. And, but he could have came in any moment and said, okay, today's the day you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was on that corrective action plan. Yeah. And that was their way to, so that was stressful. That's why. And y'all weren't married. So you were working there. Yeah. You were working there while y'all were dating and through the first few years of marriage, right? Yeah. When did, yeah. Because yeah. you were working there too, right? She, I was just there on the contract. So okay. I was working for IBM. So after, shortly after I moved to Sacramento, I went on another contract where I was living in Seattle for a couple of years and then coming back to Sacramento every weekend. So uh, my, my job changed quite a bit. And then it, it was a few years in, after we had been married, we had talked about having kids, our first child. I was like... I had to get out of IBM because that job, although I enjoyed it, was 100% travel. Mm-hmm. So I said, I, I don't want to be that dude that's gone all week and, and not be able to help with the family or raise the kids. So uh, I transitioned into the healthcare at that point. And so, I was at Pfizer and then he came into Pfizer because yeah. I left until I got laid off. So I went to Pfizer selling f- legal pharmaceuticals. That's right. <laughs> so y'all was always working together. Y'all found a way to be working yeah, together. Yeah, but different departments. Different departments, but yeah, yeah but yes, yeah. actually, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. One thing I want clarification from, you said that when y'all were, at what stage were, you said y'all were living together, y'all was living in different rooms? hmm So was that when y'all were engaged or what was that? Yeah, that was our engagement, right? Yeah, so it was, it, it worked out. It was, yeah, it worked out because this is when I was living in Seattle. So like Monday through Friday, I had an apartment in Seattle and then I would come back to Sacramento and I was like, do I really want to like rent an apartment that I'm not going to be at? But maybe well, two eight days, days or two right, days, out right? Eight days a month or whatever. So she had a duplex. I was like, can I just get a room in there? And I had my room and she had her room and then mm-hmm. okay. obviously we had a common area. It was three bedrooms so she had hers. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. you said you didn't want her, her daughter to see all that. No. And I, so. she didn't meet anyone after her father. She never met I dated and she never met anyone. She met John once I knew we were serious. 
And so, um, so y'all married now. Y'all, y'all uh, sit down on a birthday vacation. Come up and um, ideate with curls. It begins to grow. When did y'all start feeling tension in your marriage as the success of curls? Because what happens is you'll start finding your the, the business, the professional side, start doing this, and sometimes mm. the love tame in your romance begins to dwindle. Mm. So when, when did that happen? Well, the good question. Plus. Two additional kids. Yeah. Yes. Throw those two kids in. So now I got three kids. Yes. But right. two babies back to back. 14. 14 okay. months apart. Yeah. Um, I think once she got into Target, you know, that mm. you could see, although this is everything she had been working for. Yeah. Like she said earlier, it's a lot of grassroots grinding, right? Working with local salons, doing you know, all the things. And when she got into Target, that's when it really scaled right um and the, although she had great successes in that industry like you're always mm -hmm. you know you're only as good as your last quarter of sales right so yeah. she's always having to innovate and scale and scale and scale and it was just it started to take a toll because even when she was present she, she wasn't, wasn't present. Really present no because her um, mind, her and mind then mm-hmm and then, you know, we had two young kids. I mean, they were essentially they were 14 months apart. So we had two kids in diapers, both of them on balls at the same time. It was just a lot. It was, it a, was lot. a lot. Ooh. That period of time um, was de definitely difficult. And did lot. you feel what made it hard for you to actually voice how you felt is that you felt guilt? complaining if you were to complain because you you because the way you framed this was she's finally living her dream so the last thing you want to be is a voice of negativity mm, that's exactly and it. it's like i don't want to say this but i'm i'm depleted my love tank is depleted and i don't want to make you feel like i'm another stressor in your life and so i'll remain silent i think i'm pretty selfless like in terms of like what i give to my family i'm not one of those people um for me i it's just my family. Like that's it. They're most important. Um, even, even my like parents and my brother, like we're close, but like these people here yeah. they live in my house. This, th so I give everything. I, I think I'm a giver. Um, and during that time, like I, I sacrificed a lot, I think mm -hmm. in my career. Yeah. So she could do what she did. And that Explain part, what, I think, what you sacrificed in your career. So that's the part where like I had resent later. Um, I had an opportunity. I was a, uh, you know, I was doing really well at IBM. And then when I came into the healthcare industry, I was identified early. I like one Western Region Rookie of the Year. Like I was identified mm -hmm. early for like executive type roles. But there's there were a few opportunities. Um, but they all required me to travel a lot. Mm -hmm. Now temporarily, but I had to like go work in a home office and do all these different rotations. Um, so that I could be fast tracked into this executive role. And it given, and this was right around the time that, you know, our kids were like three and two and Mahisha was just starting with targets. It was brand new, but blowing up. And um, I turned all of them down because mm. I knew that it was not going to work. And I felt like this is a corporate job and it's great, but like, she's chasing her dream. Yes. Like, I feel like that is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yeah. So I'm going to stay home. And, um, you know, help obviously with the kids. And we even had a nanny um, to try to help out. Um, so I was, I, I had no problem making that sacrifice at the time. You had no problem, but you built resentment later on. I did. Mm. And so what happens is this, because yeah. this is what happens is that, gosh, it's so interesting. And that's why I want to unpack this, because I know there's people watching the podcast that most of the times you don't hear about men sacrificing their dreams behind a woman. We always hear it the other way around. And then when the husband passes away, then the woman says, I can finally go and start this candle line I've always wanted to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> it's whatever, not a candle line. Yeah, it's whatever it was <laughs> right, that she right. never wanted to do. <laughs> Right. Yeah. She just put it by the That's, wayside for all right. these years. And so it's whatever that is, but you never hear what the man goes through. And even whether it's external voices or even internal voices to be like, now you some house husband. Now you over here staying at home doing this. Like what? What's your, like you supposed to be the breadwinner? You supposed to be doing this and all this crazy stuff when we don't look at it as a team mm. and we look at it individual, you know, individual ambitions, then we can start self-reflecting and be like, dang, now so she's taking care of me. Now I want to know if she looks at me less than a man and all that stuff or the voices that people say. So I want you to give voice to that. What were you going through emotionally? What voices that you hear externally? Did friends and family say certain things? Or did Mahisha slip up and say something at, at any one of those points? What did you feel in those moments? Um, yeah, a lot of internal, a lot. And honestly, 
I think I've only really kind of unpacked it myself in recent years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, this was what target, this is 15 years ago. Yeah. Or, when I, yeah, 15, 18 yeah. years ago. And I've only recently come to peace with it, mm-hmm. you know, honestly. And when I say recent, I'm within the last five years or so. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that again, I'm very family first and I'm a big giver. So, you know, those two kids that we had, Bryce and Isabella, they, they're off in college now. They're uh, juniors and sophomores. So now that the house is a lot quieter, I'm able to kind of work on me yep. uh, and reflect. And um, so I'm still kind of getting over that. But there was a lot of, it didn't become resentment at the time. At the time, it was just like, man, like it was, a, I was questioning my self worth because I did grow up with the, those traditional mm-hmm. uh, tropes about like, you know, the role of a man. Roles, right. Yeah. And the roles of a man. I just felt like I was not doing my part. And I had to try to con- convince myself that doing your part is helping her to grow her dream business. And by being a present father, because I never wanted to be the f- type of parent that was not around. So I was, I was oftentimes the ones taking kids to practice and doing all these things and and then even started to learn how to cook and, uh, you know, doing all that kind of stuff and taking care of more of those responsibilities, doing more grocery shopping, all those things. And, um, you know, in the moment, I think a lot of it was since we were so busy, like it was just a nutty time. Like I didn't think about it, but years, as the years went on, I started to get resentful hmm. because I felt like she didn't appreciate or realize, because again, I didn't necessarily express myself. I kept it in. I was just, I, in my mind, I was just like, man, I, I sacrifice a lot for this woman. I don't feel like she really appreciates or even understands what I do so that she can do what she does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, but, you know, it, I think it's, I would do it again. I think what would be different is I would be much more verbal about my needs in the moment. I do want to take this moment um, and I want Mahisha to echo it, but I want to affirm you. Because one thing about it is that we rarely hear that. Yeah. We rarely hear that a man, you said some key things about being a present father, that y'all were able to have kids go off to college and know your name, know your presence. If I were to talk to them and and, and have them share stories, they'd be like, I remember when mm-hmm. he tried to make this food and he did this and he did this. <laughs> I remember he tried to do, they'll have right, all these right. different stories. I remember one day he tried to comb my hair and he did, it's all those little stories that you right. may not realize were right. so significant significant in those kids lives yeah. that you'll hear them share those stories to their kids in the future yeah. and so I want to tell you that you did an amazing job as the priest yes. of your household Appreciate that you that. covered your family in such a way I'm trying not to get emotional that you covered your family in such a way that you were the wind beneath her wings that allowed her yes. to soar in a ram that most women don't get a chance to soar that you got a chance to put your family from a foundational standpoint in a position that she wouldn't have gotten without you yeah. That Absolutely. you don't realize that even when you begin to ideate about how this thing came into fruition, it's because of your your care for her. There, you're saying go for it. You said I encourage her to go ahead and go for it in this dream that she has. Every time that you begin to speak about what your career ambitions were, you 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 minimize it by saying, "But here's a chance for her to accomplish her dreams." That is a sacrificial love that is absolutely beautiful. And you said at the beginning of this interview about how selfless she is and how you said you're not selfish but you're not as quite selfless well I come to debunk that that's the lie that you told yourself Mm. you are extremely selfless because you put your whole and with men our identity most of the time is in our careers Mm -hmm. we don't identify by family we don't say well just being a present father in this women have a tendency to have that nurturing feeling that maternal issue when you talk to a woman and say what do you do She'll, she'll you know when women talk to other women it's about their kids and all this stuff and my husband John he does this and he works here Mm -hmm. and it's all about family men be like yeah man I work at so and so yeah I'm CEO here I'm this that's where they find their bravado but you sir have taken the mindset of a kingdom mindset that's a different mindset. It's not based upon finance. It's not based on occupation. It's 
is based on positioning in the kingdom of God. And you took the, the, the mentality to position yourself as the priest of your household where your wife knows who you are, your wife knows where you stand, that no matter if your feelings got hurt, no matter how, how much you felt like you were taken for granted, you stood 10 mm. toes down. Even when I asked you at the beginning of this interview, I said, was there any situations where divorce was on the table? You're like, no, nah, it wasn't on the table, but it was, you know, we, we, we dealt with some issues, but it was just never on the table like that. That means that from a mindset that you had in spite, and I know none of this. You're saying, yeah. what are we going to interview about? I said, I don't know. I'm just going to flow. Well, the reality is, is that regardless of everything that you've been through, how your feelings where you felt like she didn't value and all that type of stuff in those moments, you took the responsibility and said, but I should have spoken up. Regardless of that, I've seen men leave their, their households and their wife for lesser things. Mm. And so the fact that you said... Wow. Yeah, this is the position I'm going to be. I'm going to be in my home. I'm going to take care of this. We had nannies and this, this. Because you could have, because my mind started saying, well, you have a nanny. Why didn't you go work? Why didn't you go do all this other stuff? But you still said, I, I kept hearing the Holy Spirit saying, because it's based on positioning. You weren't going to allow somebody else to raise your kids like that, that you wanted to be present. And yeah. so what I want to tell you, I salute you, King. I salute you Thank for you. being the priest of your household to cover your family in ways that allowed your wife to experience the dreams of her life. Oh, absolutely. I appreciate like, that. Thank you. So much. I, I couldn't have done it. Legit. Like, there's no way. Your your spouse matters. Yes. You can't. I remember Oprah said that who you marry will determine how far you go. If they either can help push you into your destiny or hold you back from it. Mm -hmm. And so I always say that when people ask me, I always give him the credit. Like, I couldn't have done it without him. Like, legit. Mm -hmm. Like, I couldn't have. We had so many kids. So okay. Many, so so many. many. I mean, I have total. Four. 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 So he wanted the fifth one. <laughs> Yeah, I did. I did. And so, did. you know, and so we, and I knew I couldn't have, and it, it yeah. took a special person and God gave me what I needed yeah, I in my life. That. And I, I yeah, believe that. Yeah, it takes a special person. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I, I didn't realize that until recently, I think you told me that you were, um, I guess, resentful. But he, yeah. he, he, he passed up. He was like going to be, he would have been way higher in this company, but the opportunity cost was too much besides being away. I think we sat down and said like, well, the, there's more opportunity, opportunity from curls to yeah. make way more than any top level, you know, position. So that's a joint decision, right? Yeah, it was, it was absolutely a joint decision, but I think to your point, it's those inner voices. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's almost like when you see your friends and your peers and, mm. and, and their jobs, that's where, mm. um, I would always question the decision in my yeah. head yeah, and be like, man, you know, such and such, he's yep. CM, CFO. And that, yep. like, you know, I, I was, I was in that position. Mm. I would have been in that position way before him, blah, 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 yep. blah. But, mm. but um, yeah, no, I think my biggest challenge, what I learned from that is um, I think I should have spoke up and we should have had a conversation. It would have been a lot easier for me to deal with at the time, but I internalized that for years. And my question is, yeah. do, do, does one see without looking at the org chart or whatever? Cause like you said, you wasn't, you didn't have a position in our company, right? He said he would never work with me or for me. Yeah, I never wanted he made to work. It very clear. I never wanted to work with her formally. If she need, <laughs> he if, said she never. Need, if she said if she needed like an IT guy to come and like do something for her, like what she was, she needed. And I, even to this day with her new venture, like if she needs me to like drop some stuff off of UPS, whatever, help yeah. her package, I'm her guy. But I could never be like officially on a payroll. Why not? We just it would not work. It wouldn't work. We would end up divorced yesterday. So tell me why. Because she's just very alpha and that and it's not that and that's not in itself a problem, but she's kind of a micromanager. Okay. Oh. This is true. It's true. Oh. Because you know why? You know why though? It's common with successful people that are yeah. entrepreneurs because when they delegate, it's almost she has a problem with delegating because she expects everything and, and it's not a problem. The way she wants it done. Exactly, yep. right? So no, if it's I not have to done, delegate, darling. I know I've you had to. I have left and right hands. No, no, you have to. You have to. But what I'm saying is that's the problem. When you delegate, because it's not being done the way that you would do it. And you're like following no, up. No, right no, away. no, darling. Hey, so no, is it that's done? Why I is have it done? Janelle and Stephanie, like for curls, I have my team that I could give to, and I know it would. No, be no, good. but it took a while to get there, oh. and I, just, he, I, he I was like, he, would have, he wouldn't have had the patience to go through to that. that. Yeah, I okay. because you'd have been destroying him in the no, process I would not of have it from a business standpoint. It, 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 yeah. I agree. Yeah. It, yeah. it would have been hard. Yeah, it would have been difficult for me. So, but I made that clear. I was like, I'll do anything you want. I just, she was like, why don't you just come in like officially work for us? I always see other couples look at like all my the competition at work with. 
their husbands. Look, they're working with their husbands. Nah, Mahisha. <laughs> I'm nope. like, that, that's because they don't have a Mahisha in that relationship. Oh. You know what I mean? Like, it's a different... You were not different. doing like that. that is wrong. Or they could have a Mahisha and you don't realize that their marriage may be suffering. That's what I mean yes. by being wise about it. Because you end up finding out a couple years later they got a divorce yes. because they had this unresolved resentment that happened year one of their mm. working yeah. together yeah. and it destroyed. But that's what I mean by being the priest of your household. You were wise enough to say, even though she was saying, come on board, where y'all could have said... And we did this together from a org standpoint. Uh-huh. You were like, we're going to do this together, but I'm going to be behind the scenes. And I'm going to help you with all this other stuff, but I'm not doing that because you know your own capacity to say, if I'm in this situation, I can't have it at work and at home. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's hard. It's hard enough. <laughs> Man, That's exactly I'm what we talked about. I'm going to attack from both ends. <laughs> no, I'm not doing it. No, no, no. But no, yeah, no, that makes sense. Because it would have been too much. It would have been too much. It takes so much yeah, wisdom to be like yeah. that. And that's yeah. what I mean. If couples can be honest and transparent and vulnerable with each other, then they can have those uncomfortable conversations and say, baby, you enough as a wife. I, I, I don't want you as <laughs> my boss. It. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Or yeah. you're enough as my husband, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. You find people that, because sometimes you question why don't the first lady at the church work at the church or yeah. whatnot? Yeah. She'd be like, because that's not, I was talking to this one first lady. She said, that's not what I was called to do. Like, I wasn't called to be in ministry like mm. that. And in our mind, we, we, we so used to seeing power couple yeah. so to speak so we believe that oh they're both doing this this is amazing but at the end of the day you have to also be wise enough to do what the, the, your marriage has a capacity for yeah. mm. so in other words if the, the the husband was called to be a pastor it doesn't mean that you were called to be a co-pastor but in that case shouldn't that be a special situation where she should be called to be first lady because that's a different space but that's what i'm saying it's, it's based upon but she can we can tailor you gotta think first lady in the bible that's something that we done made True. up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you're right. You're yeah. right. We done right. made up all this. We, we make True. it seem like it's biblical, but you're just a husband to a pastor. You never saw like a pastor in the Bible or well, well a priest in the Bible be like, and this their first lady. Yeah, like, right, right. That, yeah. That's something we done something created. We added, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so what happens is we we put a calling on occupation. So it's like you were called to do this man or woman to be the pre- or the preacher or the pastor but that doesn't mean your wife now has to preach you know what I'm saying right not preach yes <laughs> yeah. absolutely but, but the- you know what I think what I wanted in you was because I felt like he has a different he operates in different space and he has the analytical he's very bright and I'm like we could be and that's why I was pushing for it because yeah. the opposites and his mindset versus mm-hmm. mine he he can balance me level me you know and I felt like that that would have been a benefit and that was why I was pushing for it. that's why I think it would be a brilliant idea you know what I'm saying based upon the skill set of yeah, each person skill sets. but then when you start putting it in the application of it and yeah. he like that ain't gonna work You know what I'm saying That's what he said For years I, I used to be so mad at you When you would say no mm-hmm. like, Yeah oh my I just gosh, thought, It looks so good great. on paper Yeah But I just also feel like It's important to have Work-life balance You know that what part. I mean And when you're an entrepreneur there That's a very difficult thing To achieve mm-hmm. For a lot of entrepreneurs I mean she She doesn't turn it off Cause um, you even said y'all quality time, alone time, her mind, her wheels are still spinning. Cause that's what typically happens for entrepreneurs. Absolutely, absolutely. We still work with that. We're still working on that. I mean, I just you know, you know, late at night, she's on email. Yeah. Um. It, you know, any time of the day, and so um, that's something we constantly work on. Thank you, Holy um, Spirit. This scripture says, "To whom much is given, much is required." Yes. And so when you start thinking about that, ah, thank you, Holy Spirit. When you start thinking about what does it take to curate this life that y'all have, it takes the sacrifice of, I don't even want to use the word dealing, but serving and providing space for a woman like that who can think outside of levels that most people, I don't know what it's, I don't know what it's like scaling a business. I can't even have that conversation with her, but you've experienced what that is. And the, and a lot of times people are saying they want, I used to say this all the time, a funny joke I used to have. I said, women say they want to bury a, a doctor that's a gynecologist <laughs> until he keeps looking at different yeah. vaginas. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, if you find out that he looked at a certain woman, you like, you don't see her. Uh-huh. She's like, that's one of my patients. That's your patient. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? You'd be mad. Right, right, right. You'd be mad. You'd be like, hold on. He'd be like, what you talking about? That's what I do. 
You tell me you seen her vagina? Yes. I mean, oui. yeah, like what? Yeah, right. Now you mad. Now oui. you want to be married no more. You all insecure. You feeling all kind of ways. You know what I'm oui. saying? I can't even. I would said, never. <laughs> you can be, oh my God, no. <laughs> she's like, she, 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 no. she getting triggered right here. She's like, no, you I'm better not. I'm getting triggered by just thinking about it. The thought came in my mind. <laughs> and that's the reality. People say yes. they want certain things until they get it. And so a lot of times people say they want to build multi-million dollar brands and all that. But can you weather that storm? Can you be married to some Somebody that neglects you in uh-huh. some of those seasons. You don't like that word, but you're going to be neglected because it's so hard. Because it'd be different if, and I'll and I'll speak this into existence as she builds this new business uh, venture. Uh, I want you to be mindful, Mahisha, not to make those same yes. cardinal mistakes that you made in the past yes. to say, okay, I saw what I did this time. Now I need to find balance. I need to really structure my life different. So and I don't that's take one of the reasons why, because we scaled it, but also I sold it because of all of that. You did? Yes, I sold curls in. So I'm transitioning out, I'm transitioning out of that from beauty to beverages. Now I'm doing alcoholic, non-alcoholic cocktails. Good. Hussy Smart Sips. HussySmartSips.com. Um, Hussy, HussySmartSips.com. Yes. H-U-S-S. S-H-U-Z-Z-Y. Smart Sips. Spell again. H-U-Z-Z-Y. Z-Z-Y. Yeah, Hussy Smart Sips. And I'm going to say this. I know your mind is wondering why Hussy. Okay. Yeah. So Hussy was a word, as you know, in our community that was defined a woman of low moral reproach, right? Well, we're changing the way we look at women and the definition of Hussy, like we're changing the definition of a cocktail. Our cocktails are non-alcoholic, good for your liver, good for your gut, and give you a nice, relaxed feeling without alcohol. But you, so we're but changing you, 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 those. You didn't, bring, you didn't bring me or Rihanna, no sample, oh, no, no, but Oh, nothing. my gosh. I, you see how gonna... some people are? No. <laughs> you see how no, some people are? I am sending those to you. Okay. I will send, send you. Send some to Rihanna. She needs some to Yes, absolutely. Yeah, my technical director. I want to see what this so tastes I'm, like. I'm going to be more intentional because I, you know, the, the, I think the pressure of curls was different. I'm in a new industry and this is the beverage industry and it's a little different. I don't, I'm not going to feel that. Yeah. I'm speaking that now. And the dynamics yeah. have changed yeah. too. Our kids are older and oh, yeah. we have a lot more time to, to just, with just us. But you say, I'm still not working for you, huh? No, <laughs> no. I mean, I like my job. I mean, I, I'm successful in my job, but yeah. it's just, I, you know, I'm not where I could have been, but I'm good with it. I'm happy with it. It, it gives me, the time to to invest in family and to you know myself, um, and so uh, yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Mahisha, have you mourned the 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 thought of having him not work with you? Oh, I've been over that. Okay. I mean, you know, I realized he made the right decision, even with the new the new venture. Well, with Hussey, I feel like he. Yeah, I'm just I'm excited. I'm doing it by myself. Like again, I'm kind of remembering and getting. You mean recharged, but he still helps. Like he dropped off boxes the other day. He, you know, I try not to ask him to do a lot <laughs> unless yeah. it's really heavy. Right. <laughs> then I have to. <laughs> so let me tell you this: as y'all have curated this life, for y'all uh, don't know what 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 y'all sold curls for. Uh, but this life that y'all live now, yeah. What do you think about that from a financial standpoint? Like, because freedom, I'm, yeah, freedom. Yeah, for me, it's always about um, just being I got very fiscally responsible, just being able to leave something and give my kids a head start. So, you know, I've always been into real estate investing. And so now it's about acquiring assets and real estate that then we could pass along Good. and then help them when they get out of college to purchase their first asset. You know, so that's kind of the mindset I'm on right now. Like I said, we have two in college. So it's just getting prepared for that. Um, and then we still have one in, we still have one in eighth grade, believe it or not. So she's oh, still at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. we was giving us the blues. But, <laughs> Ooh-wee. but uh, yeah. Kids are different now. Pray they, for us. They oh, Jesus. They that different. one. Boy, they, they, they different. She's built yeah, differently. They, they's built different. But yeah, it, for me, like it's, um, obviously Mahisha likes nice things and I, yeah, I'm good with that. That's fine. <laughs> for me, it's more about, I want a different phase where I kind of want to create experiences. Yeah. Yes. So being travel. intentional with travel, but creating memorable experiences versus things. Okay, yeah. so I love so, travel. Okay. And she loves but, to travel. But we don't like to travel the same. So no. I have to do all the planning. I can't let yeah. him touch any travel. So, so you was got first NA. class everything, he, he, four or five star My hotels. husband is so frugal. <laughs> Oh my God, oh, he can't touch me. vacation. He can't. It, frugal with certain things. He buys for me, but he, other ways, he's just, I can't. Why go on vacation if I can't really enjoy it? <laughs> why can't you enjoy it, please? <sighs> you let him pick a room. Oh, come <sighs> I've gotten a lot better with that. 
What would you pick? What would you pick, Josh? Well, I, you a know, real, a hotel room this size for all of us. <laughs> no, no. The idea is they're older. Get let them have a separate room. But yeah. no, Mahisha's right. She likes to, you know. And I get it. I've come around. We don't do a lot of family vacations, so when we do it now, I let her do it, and we just kind of go over the top. <laughs> And it is what it is, but because they're, like, they're their school schedules are now mixed up with yeah, college, so we yeah. can't do them all together. I mean, with her, it's like if there's a butler a service, yacht, let's get the butler, butler service. Like, and I'm not just like, do we really need to butler? The whole time you look like, for house. We need, we need I, don't even, I don't even like to look. I, I don't even look at the the invoice. No, no I, 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 I hide him. I told her. Him. I say I don't even want to see it. It make a stomach turn. Yeah, I, I just I, I I'll take it. I got yeah, it. I yeah, got it. John could be sick for next week. I don't even. I could have bought a whole property with this. Right, right. That's that's how that's how I think. My man, we could have put a down payment on this dude. But John, <laughs> but John, would you speak to our wealth team and I make sure? Oh, uh, um, you know, no, Chelsea, we do. We have a really we, good team. Can that, is that okay? Yes, we want to do this. And she <laughs> says she, yes. She validates yeah. it. She validates yeah. it. Yeah. So we're we're and that's you know, the thing about it. The balance of the person or whatnot is to be able to accept the person that's opening up doors to say. Let's experience this. You like, oh, this is this is this is a lot. It don't even make sense. Yeah. It's hard to justify, it, but allow that person to be, you know, authentically you. Yes, <laughs> yeah. and he does. I do. I appreciate I that. I, do. I don't think I could yeah. have had a better spouse. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> I mean, he does. You know what he said? I'm going to end with this. He said, "I'm all, I'm the one that's a little bit more like you said. I was getting triggered by the gynecologist, yeah. and he's so laid back. People are in my DMs all the time, and he's like, whatever, you know." Yeah. And he's like, you know what, Mahisha? If someone took you, I'm not worried because they bring you right back. <laughs> he said that. I love John. He said that's that. Funny. Isn't that crazy? Is that, that's funny, it's though. though. They know you. They know you. They know you. Funny. Funny. Well, know she, he said like, they bring you right back. Because what he's saying is that he knows what he asked your life, and he knows that you won't even experience what he brings into your life with anybody else. Or because of, no one else put up with me. Or, yeah, or yeah, no one has capacity for yeah, you. Yeah. They'd be like, this is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot. I this, cracked up when you said that. You sit there, they put a bow on you and say, return to Cinder. <laughs> <laughs> return to Cinder. John, thank Take you. Take her you back. Can have a <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's yeah. really true. And so what makes your marriage work? Well, I just have this... Through it all, I have just this passionate love for her. Mm. And at the end of the day, when no matter how I'm feeling, if I'm upset with her, if we haven't been talking, if we, you know, all, all those things, what I always tell myself is like, who else would you want to spend the rest of your life with? You know what I mean? Mm. Like, who else? And so, like, when we brought up the divorce thing, I don't even like to use that word. Mm. Yeah. Things have gotten bad in the, you know, and, and, and there's things that we still have to work on. But for me, it's like she's worth working on. Aww. You know she's what I mean? Worth working on. Um, you know, I have friends that got divorced after twenty years, and yeah. it, the the grass is not greener. And like when I look at them, I'm like, bro, like mm. that's not it for me. Like that is not it. There I don't want to be out here on these apps. <laughs> <laughs> With these apps, bro. You know, so um, I want to be on these apps. <laughs> yeah, nah, man, she's worth it. Like, I, you know, I always try to put her and the kids first, um, yeah. and um, I think I've done that for our whole relationship, yes. and that that means she they mean the world to me. I mean, they're everything to me. So, uh, whatever we go through, I try to go into it with that mindset, and I've learned a ton. I'm still learning. Uh, I'm not perfect by any means, but I think she makes me want to be a better person. So. Good. Aww. Well, Hisha, what makes your marriage work? I would say compromise. Good. And God. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Because here's yeah. the deal, like the devil does not like unity in mm-hmm. marriage and he's about to destroy yep. everything that's good, anything mm-hmm. that God brings together. And so I think it, you know, God is the center. If he, mm-hmm. long as he's the center of all of our issues and we can get through it, I think that's the biggest component. Cause as we've had, we would have struggles about a topic, a subject matter. And recently was parenting. Cause you know, he's getting a little soft with Kennedy and, and making <laughs> Tired, me the bad bro. cat cop Tired. the whole time. Tired. And it's making me so mad. And then we yeah. go to church and you get a message just That's about right. the unity God of timing, boy. parenting together That's good. and prick his heart. Yeah, it's so good. keeping that in the prayer, this is right. that is reunion. We, we, we like revitalized yeah. and brought us back together because mm-hmm. I was angry. Mm-hmm. At the fact that I'm got to be the bad cop all the time, yeah. And so this girl now is like, "Oh, daddy, daddy," because mommy is gonna be the she bad mean. cop. Yeah, she means because she needs it. She's that one kid, brilliant, beautiful, smart, confident, but will wear you down. And and she and John just is tired, so he's yeah. like, 
Yeah, that's that. that there's some truth to that. There's some truth to that. We're working on it though. We're good. Yeah, she's, good. she's yeah, she's on punishment right now. <laughs> so that, I think that helped. I mean, just getting that having God obviously in the center. Yeah, y'all nice. touched on something that's very rarely touched on um, on this podcast is unity and parenting, which is extremely important because the kids need to see y'all as a unified uh, team to be able to say because they're like, well, I'm just gonna talk to daddy. Yep, I'm just gonna go talk to mom. Yep, instead of saying. How are you going to talk to the other part of me? We're one. Mm-hmm. So if we're one, you mm-hmm. can't come talk to another part of my brain to get a different response. This yep. is me. Yep. You're talking to me. If you talk to her, you're talking to me. Yep. But we don't look at it like that. Be like, ah, you know, you know how your mama is. Go ahead and go and do this. Yes. That was a challenge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just, listen, but this, I was just recently convicted on this. This mm. is recent. Recent. Good. Very recent. Yes. Because I, I realized that, you know what? I think I'm just getting tired, bro. Like, I do let things slide more yeah. than I probably should. And I haven't been standing up as, as one. And it, it was so funny, man. Like she had to go out of town for something. So I went to church. I took Kennedy. We just, her and I went and she went to her little children's church. And the message was um, parent, like all about parenting. Unified, right? Yeah, yeah. unified parenting. And it, like, it was just like, God knew exactly what I needed to hear. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we, we're in the midst of that right now. Um, let's go ahead and address this, Mahisha, uh, because one of my friends, like I'm not even aware of this show at all, but one of my friends told me about what's the show called Below Deck? Lord have mercy, Below Deck. Below um, Deck. Bravo. Would you like to touch on that? If you don't want to, you ain't gotta touch on it, but do you want to touch on whatever this foolishness I've been hearing about? Yeah, this? sure. To everyone watching, it's all fake, it's sliced and edited. So it was an unfortunate situation where it started to be a great vacation and it was fabulous, we had a great time that this turned into something else where it was sliced to look like we were, me and my girlfriends were bougie and high demanding and difficult. And that created a backlash from mostly men and white, white men and women to me and my children. Which was wild. unfortunate, which was wild because it wasn't even crazy. What ha- The editing alone, what they did, still didn't warrant what came as a yeah. result. It was so wild. It was wild. It was yeah. wild. And so y'all um, on this vacation together, right? Yeah, with mm-hmm. two or three other couples. Mm-hmm. And I sold them on it and feel bad because of all the things that happened as a result. But um, I realized that was, I'm glad that I didn't do um, Housewives of Dallas because they wanted me for that because oh. Lord... Mm. So it was a lot, but you know what, what I learned is like, you don't worry about what other people feel or think. And I'm used to, cause here's the thing. I am, like he said, a giver. So I'm doing so much in my community for women of color, entrepreneurs, mentoring is, you know, helping them get into retail and helping brands grow. So to see that depicted that way was really, I felt um, irresponsible and I felt an ownership to speak to my community, my people of color to say that that wasn't real. Mm hmm. Yeah. Let me ask you this though, uh, because I know that there's a a PR way of ex, you know feeling like all is cool, but from a mental health standpoint, how did you deal with that? Because when you get that type mm. of negativity and and people saying stuff about you on on online that's that's not true, you know, as tough as you may feel, you know, you grew up in the hood, but. Yeah. When you get in these streets and they start saying, like, hold on now, I do enough bad damage if I said if, if it was actually true on stuff that I actually did. Now you're gonna make me own something that, that's a lie. Now I don't like that. That's right. the way I look at stuff. Right. So right. did that affect you from a mental standpoint? It did. It did. It was like when you woke up, I woke up with like hundreds of, of horrible messages um on social, not emails, right? And the redeeming thing for me wasn't my community. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not saying, you know, I love all races, but I mean, I service and, 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 and tend to my people, but getting the hate in this climate where it's a black woman running for president, yeah. you know, it felt, it felt even more angry yeah. more and it was, yes. It. And it was, you know, they're angry about seeing this affluent black woman, they seemingly being downing to a, you know, a Caucasian woman. So it was hard because I never received that. I, I get accolades where I go. I don't so you get said that. all that was just editing. You wasn't demeaning this woman or none of that. The stuff that was said were said but to a different people at different times. Like yeah. a friend to my friend versus look like I'm saying it to Yeah, Asia. I know how reality shows yeah. work. They're, and, they're, they're, and then for you guys listening, the part when they have their confessional and they're speaking alone, that's given to them on a script. Yeah. And they say it because the producers pitch it together and they need you to say this to bring it to life yep. and so even when Aisha said different things it wasn't those weren't her words they were given to her yeah 
Yeah. I just think people need to have context about what this is. This is television. That's and, right. And, and, yes. and it's television for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, and it's to create this storyline and get whatever they want out of that to say I want conflict here yes uh, I was talking to one of my friends who was on this reality show that they had to just keep shooting over they, they'll shoot a scene they'll be like hold on th this is boring like there's no way we can air this we want you to say this mm -hmm. and then they'll go but that didn't say it <laughs> and so they'll say it and they'll be like okay and then they'll go back to the other person you know she said such 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 and so in the confessional so you have the nerve to think that I such 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 and then they're saying this stuff and then while they're watching it they go and then there, and what's so crazy about it, and this is the whole manipulation, and I call it the prince of the air, uh, because the the devil has the kingdom of the air, and these airwaves. You could have if they shoot us and edit us in a way, you will hate me, knowing that we was cool right before, like we were fine, we yes. were fine, we were sitting here laughing and tripping out. They could take this episode, edit it in a way you like. And, and you and you act like you got amnesia, like, but Mahisha, you were there. I never said that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But no, it's what you said behind my back. Actually, I wasn't saying that about you. I was saying that about yes. this job that I had. No, they said, you said, I would never work with her again. So you were talking about having me on your podcast. That's I was talking about this job. I said I would never. And yep. they can edit in the way. You're like, but we ain't never had no problem. Yep. I see couples go through divorces after reality shows. Oh, I see friends break up after it. reality shows. And you be like, God, y'all got to be smarter than that. They're editing you in order to get views. Yes. Period. Yes. And they don't care what the casualty of war is. No. And so. I'm so like, glad I need the housewives. I'm so glad. Oh yeah. You got to be very mindful that it will destroy your life. Yes. Uh, and so you got to be extremely careful about that. Listen, I thank y'all for y'all vulnerability. I thank y'all for y'all transparency. Uh, the name of the, the new non-alcoholic non drink yep. is called Hussy. Hussy Smart Sips. Hussy Smart Sips. With liver protection, gut health, and nootropics and adaptogens to give you nice, good feeling without alcohol. What kind of feeling is going to give you then? A, a real, like, <laughs> trying to get you, euphoric you, feeling. So it gets you buzzed? Nootropics and, and adaptogens give you a nice, relaxed, calm feeling. Okay. So, so it's going to give you a little buzz without the fuzz of alcohol. So it gives you a buzz. You're going to feel- Not an alcohol buzz, a euphoric feeling. That's the better way to say it. Okay. So if you're modifying, abstaining from alcohol, dry January, sober, curious October, whatever you are, just looking to change your diet, want to be more healthy with your, mindful with your drinking- that's so awesome. I've never drank a day in my life. So, so oh, I, never, I, not never, even in college. Okay, never. I don't drink. So I'm saying, awesome. is this, so is this something that is this for the like what, how I celebrate on New Year's is I get uh, sparkling cider and sparkling yes. grape juice. So is that comparative to that, or is it just not that at all? It's, it's uh, not that at all, feel. sir. It's low sugar, low carb, vegan, non GMO, gluten free. No refined sugar, no caffeine. But you're going to feel it's a buzz. A, it's a, not alcohol. It's yeah. more of a euphoric, relaxed feeling. So if a nootropic and adaptogens are mood enhancers. And so they give you a nice, relaxed feeling. Okay. So they're natural, right? And they're, if you heard of mocktails, they're in that space, but without all the sugar. What made you decide to do this? Well, um, tuh, gosh, really? Well, you used to be an alcoholic or something? No, <laughs> well, I was really depressed. Mm, and this is really transparent. You ask, you always ask these hard questions. Because that's, uh, that's and scary. I really leaned too heavily into alcohol as I was coping. And that's why I came out fighting, as I always do. I always come back on top with a new mission. That's the story. Yeah. The the very the very story that you're most uncomfortable of sharing is the story. Uh, I always find that that's the reason why in the first season of my podcast, I start the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I could just talk about uh, here's my journey as I discover, uncover and recover love and talk about me sitting on this couch and taking extracting gems from my guests and learning so I can have a better marriage uh, in the future. Or I can say. Because the way I got here is because I cheated on my ex-wife multiple times and I mismanaged the heart of a black woman. And so oh, I want to do life better. Yeah. So I said that. And I remember that. in a couple of episodes, guy was like, tell how you got here. I said, mm. no, I only got 500 subscribers on YouTube. I ain't going to, these women going to get mad at me. It's going to destroy everything uh -huh. I'm trying yeah, to build. Men, I only got men. 500 subscribers. So these people going to be like, he's a cheater? Oh, no. God said, do, do that. Okay. And I said, 
I said, well, first let me ask my ex-wife to make sure she cool. But that's after I recorded it. And I had my buddy Joey Greco, who's a former host of the show Cheaters. And um, I had him on the podcast. No way. Yes. I said, you know, if, you know, I'm going to curate that experience. I'm going to curate it with my homeboy and talk about, hey, I, I, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about my own cheating. And so I brought him on the podcast. I shared it, said that I cheated because I had a lack of integrity and didn't try to pass blame on my ex-wife to say, well, if she would have did this and if she did this, No. I cheated because I had a lack of integrity, point blank. I sent that episode to my ex-wife before it's released, and she said, I bless it. Go ahead and release it. She said, mm. I love how you showed up in this, and uh, go ahead and do it. And I did it. I remember when I uploaded. I uploaded on that computer in that room, and I ran out real fast. because I, I, You want to see all the responses? I, said, I just yeah. ran. I said, oh, oh, Lord. I just started. I was like, why am I doing this? Why? And when I tell you that's been the brave, the bravest and the most, now people are like, gosh, you always talk about how you cheated on your ex-wife in the past because the Bible says that what Paul says, I learned to boast in my weakness. Uh -huh. And the reason why is because I, I, I want to create an atmosphere and not to let people think that Lateris is, is so perfect, even though my podcast is funny because I was afraid when I had a little over 500, 500 subscribers. Now I got 550 thousand thousands, yeah. subscribers yeah. and so it wouldn't have gotten to 550,000 had I not been faithful over that 550 you know and mm -hmm. so what happens is is that leading with transparency and, mm -hmm. and vulnerability created an, a door for other people to say hey I, I was unfaithful in my marriage I cheated on my husband I cheated on my wife I get DMs all the time I've walked couples mm -hmm. uh, through Instagram video talking to couples because they've reached out and they want to tell their spouse that they were unfaithful and I say mm -hmm. hey video call me we're going to walk through it I'll schedule Zoom calls with them we, we do that and we'll talk and watch marriages heal from that but it but no mm -hmm. one would have found they wouldn't have found me as a safe space had I not led with my scars mm -hmm. right. and so that's what I'll do I'll just show my scars and say hey listen I want to teach y'all and give y'all instruction on how to overcome that by being vulnerable in spaces that where you feel not being seen or heard in the marriage or whatever may be going through that you deal with that before it festers and, and grows to something that you can't control mm. and so mm. that's what I do on the Dear Future Wifey podcast so I applaud you for even going into the pain of what happened to you emotionally that led you to create Hussy yeah thank you, you know, well thank because, you because that's what gives it more life and people are like hey because it may be somebody else that's trying to like you said not drink as much and say you know what let me find an alternative yes and then now you've helped them transition out of something that was causing a lot of pain yes and healthy yeah. liver protection gut health all the things you are impacted with when you drink she and said so, liver health yeah which is important so I'm transitioning from beauty to beverages beauty to beverages hey y'all give it up for my homies the Dellingers that was good stay tuned to the end for a letter to my future wifey and write in love letters to you Ladarian thrusted suddenly into child protective services in 2015 my nephew black a boy the likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship slim to none Armani 16 years old black a boy with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name the likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it. Slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize 
that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTaris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, I hope y'all enjoyed that episode. I really did. I love it when I get a chance to talk to couples and they open up and share stuff about each other that, or even about themselves that they've never shared with the other person. So I really enjoyed that. Shout out to the Dellingers um, for your transparency and vulnerability. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, I promise to never let resentment find a home in my heart. When challenges arise, I'll choose to communicate openly, seeking understanding rather than allowing bitterness to settle in. We will face our differences head on, knowing that our love is too valuable to let anger or frustration build walls between us. Forgiveness will be a cornerstone of our relationship. I'll commit to forgiving quickly and letting go of any lingering hurt because holding on to grudges only creates distance. I want our connection to remain strong and unbreakable, built on trust and grace. Together, we'll protect our love by addressing issues before they fester. I vow to always choose love, understanding, and healing over resentment, ensuring that our relationship continues to grow in harmony and strength. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.